Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Happy Sunday. Thank you for all for tuning in to On Time Ministries podcast today. My name is Pastor Johnson, founder of On Time Ministry. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So if it's your very first time tuning in to our service, comment in the section below your city, state, or country that you reside in. If you have a testimony that you want to share, comment in the chat below. So we're going to go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Father, we honor you today with open arms to receive your words today. Father, your eyes are on us every step of the way. Everything we face and deal with, help us to get closer to you, Father. Lord, we honor you today with greatness and gladness. We bless you in your holy name with thanksgiving and honor today. We promise over all things in your precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So I have a couple of announcements that I'm making before we get started with today's message, everyone. So this upcoming week, we're still promoting the love ministry. We have our BHT, which is the Black Lit Traumatization webinar week three, which we're doing on Tuesday evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everyone's a little later this week due to a chaotic week and other scheduling I have prior to coming on live on uh, Tuesday evening. We have our Bible study assignments posted all the group days. I still have to put all those assignments on Instagram for those to study during the month of October. We are doing our uh, webinar for the Love Ministry for Breast Cancer Awareness on next Sunday at 1 p.m. every time. Um, we have our children's services next Sunday, as well as our youth ministry services. There will be no one-time ministry services next Sunday, which is the third Sunday. We will resume services on the fourth Sunday, fourth Sunday of October, everyone. Uh, we have our Declare the Month of <clears throat> November, the 27th of every month, and I'll be posting that as well. We'll resume Bible study uh, sessions in the month of November and December, everyone. And with that being said, we're getting ready to launch our podcast for On Time Ministry in the month of December. The segment is going to be Saturday Morning Inspiration. And we'll be live at 7 a.m. every Saturday in the month of December, all the way to the end of 2024. Look forward. We're kicking off a new series, not next week, but the following. The series entitled Rap Race. And that series is a three part series that will tie into the month of November. And then we're doing our 21 Days of Gratefulness series, which will be a post every day about what you are grateful for. So make sure you tune in with that. Moving forward in the month of December, we'll be talking about season greeting, which we are calculating about the importance of Jesus and what that means in your life in the month of December, everyone. We're doing like 24 days of season's greetings. What are you thankful for in that era? Our next 21 days fasting and praying will be next year, uh, January the 18th through February the 5th, everyone. So just to mark your calendar, January the, the 18th, 2025 to uh, February the 5th is our 21 days fasting and praying. I'll come up with a flyer so that I'll share with that with you all later on uh, in the year. Of this year to let you know what that looks like moving forward every time. All right. So last week we talked about spiritual discernment. We talked about what spiritual discernment looked like every time. And we went in very broad details about that description. So today we're going to be speaking about why should we have discernment? Okay. Why should we have spiritual discernment? So we have a couple of scriptures that is going to uh, iterate what we're speaking about here today in One Time Ministries podcast service. All right, so turn with me. But before I get started, let me give you a broad description of what we're going to move forward. So why should we have discernment? The sermon process is eliminated for Christians to understand God's will and direction through prayer, reflection, study, and scripture. Believers disguise between divine guidance and other influences, including evil spirits. So why is it so important? So we can distinguish the difference between godly spirits 
and ungodly spirits. And what that looks like, congregation, is the fact of the matter is when you feel something about someone that doesn't feel right and it doesn't sit right with you, it's letting you know that something's off. And how do you know? Thank you, the Spirit. Their way, their action, and the way they say things. For example, you may come up against somebody who can know the word inside out, but there's one little hiccup that may throw you on course that makes you start to question things. And when they say it, it can be a phrase like this, like, oh, God is amazing, God is wonderful, and everything. But did you know this says that in the Bible? Then you're like, what do you mean, what does this say? And then they start twisting things around that doesn't even align to the word of God. So you have to be very mindful of the people that you're encountering. You can't call everybody your brother and sister, okay? Because everybody don't mean you well. I always let you know that. Because you have people who come into your life to kind of throw you off course and begin to think that they're from God when they're actually from hell. And the thing about it is, they will have you believing every word that they say. See, this is why you have to be very, very careful the conversations that you have with folks about. You just a casual conversation talking about yourself or just situation at, 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 at hand. And the reason why you have to be careful because a lot of them don't give two cents about what you got going on. So you have jealous spirits, you have familiar spirits, you have fornicating spirits, you have evil spirits, you have different types of spirits. And those people are not what they claim to be. And they're not what they say they are. And the thing about it is, this is why you have to be very, very careful, even with family and friends, to really stop allowing these people into your life. You love them and care for them, this and that, in the form. But the true reality of it is, do they mean you any well? See, they have a way of saying different things to nudge in your spirit. They have different ways of getting into your skin. But when you carry the full arm of God daily, into your life, you begin to sustain those things that are in Discernment is critical in spiritual warfare. As emphasized in Ephesians 6 and 11, we urge believers to put on the full armor of God so they can take your stand against the schemes of the devil, protecting yourself from the top of your head all the way down. If you have seen the description of the full armor of God from the top of your head all the way down, that's covered every part of you. Be like, well, Pastor, what about the back? everything you're covered everywhere because you are carrying that full armor every day wherever you're going like you can be traveling you can be at work you can be at home you can be wherever you are you're carrying that armor this week we had hurricane people that came in florida and different parts of florida on the west coast and did some very damage we had tornadoes that came in the area that destroyed a lot of homes and a lot of people are under a lot of displacement. Most people had people on, on, on social media prophesizing about the, the storms and whatnot. They get us fear. Some things you shouldn't address if God hasn't given a word for you to speak about. Certain things you shouldn't address if God has not given you a word to speak about. If God has not given you a prophetic word to speak about, Keep your mouth closed. Being a prophet is very, very critical and challenging at times because you really got to really listen to what God is saying because the enemy will come in and really redirect things and make things very difficult for you. People get on social media questioning prophecies and prophets because they don't think these people here from God. And I saw a post during this week about people upset with a lot of these prophets because they sold a lot of seeds or they shared a lot of things and people believe these folks. But you got to know the true fruit of who God is and a lot of these people that you're listening to folks. Even many people question me. But I didn't get on social media prophesying about the storms and the tornado because I know my place. And many others need to do the same in the position that God has them at. You got to really hear God's voice and you got to know it's coming from God, not coming from the enemy. And many ask him, my pastor, what do you mean the enemy? See, the enemy was the higher archangel in heaven. He was the director of the of, in heaven up there. But he got a big head. And all the ones that were following him got kicked out of heaven because they thought they were more than God. 
See, the thing about it is, when you pray to God, and say things to God, God hears those prayers. See, the enemy does not See, if the enemy goes by your past, he brings up things that you've done. He brings up confusion. He brings up discord. He brings up confliction, animosity. He don't want to see you thrive. He don't want to see you. He want to continue to bring this mantleness into your life that caused you to be stressed out and overwhelmed, made you question things, and even have you question the God. See, this is why it's so important to have spiritual discernment because the things that you are hearing from God is from God. And the things that you need to hear from God is going to come from God. And God will send people your way to remind you this is what he wants you to hear. See, the enemy has people he using too. You may be going through a rough past in your life. He'll send somebody that the wants. See, pay attention to the wants. See, many of you it's so confused and conflicted by the wants that you don't know what the needs look. See, the thing about it is you have to listen very carefully to what a lot of these people say. See, a lot of you are following people on social media that have no connection to God. You have a lot of people who are on social media who's pimping God. You have a lot of people on social media who's manipulating God and using it to their own advantage to make people believe that it's coming from God. This is why I encourage people in this ministry to study the word of God. And learn the word. I don't stress it enough that you got to learn the word of God. And check this information. And, and actually know this is from God. Not from man. And the thing about it is when you know it's from God. And what God says about you is valid points. He wants you to know that it's coming from him. And not from me. Discernment interaction. The Christian life has every point second in uh, uh Peter 1, excuse me, first, second Peter, verses 1 and 3, okay? Interacting, knowing the difference, even in the churches, knowing who is from God and who's not. Is Satan sitting in the pulpit? Satan sitting in the churches. He's sitting to see who can devour. He's sitting to see how he can cause discord into the ministries, which he's been doing for long this time. Why you think sister this and sister that and brother this and that? I always got their new nose toot up at somebody because of a bug that was planted in their ear. And that bug was planted in their ear and spread it to all the congregations. And that's how a lot of churches end up corrupted because you listen to that one person. If you don't have spiritual discernment, you will fall for anything and everything every time. Spiritual understanding is really the way God allows us to see the world and see ourselves through his eyes. And so God gives us the privilege he gives us the Bible as a lens to see the world as he sees it. So God gives us the lenses to see the world as he sees it. Okay. It is amazing things through the power of the spirit of God. We are now able to understand the Bible, the scripture, and through the word, the way the world works. So understanding the Bible and the scripture is so, so critical. And through the world and the way the world works. See, the Bible is basic instruction before leaving this earth. And how did any of you like, Pastor, what the, where did that come from? I heard that a long time ago. I looked at the research and said that. I just said that. It's letting you know how the world's viewpoint of things work. How man's perspective is completely different than God's. Their ways is not their his ways. His thoughts are not their thoughts. So what God says is completely the opposite of what man says. So people like to question and maneuver and ask millions of questions to really try to pick your brain to see if they want you to say what they want you to say instead of what the word of God says. See, the thing about it is people want you to use phrases and terminologies based on what they have learned. But everybody at the end of the day have a different viewpoint and different outlook about what certain things look like. Let's look at a couple of scriptures here, everybody. And 1 John, verse 1 and 4 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out to the world. And they have. As we're looking at it right now in our society, everyone, there's so many false prophecies out here in the world that really will lead that they're hearing from God. The devil has a field day with it too. So this is why you fast, pray, and meditate in God's word. 
to really know it's coming from him and not coming from him. Because the enemy has his way of creeping inside a lot of people's ears and pouring all this negative and false information out there that people are feeding into. And many people think your spirit are so confused and conflicted. Is it coming from God or is it coming from the words of the man? See, a lot of us who are true prophets and, and true ministers of the gospel, we stay connected at God's word. And we know we hear from God because it comes from God. And it doesn't come from man. We stay in God's word. We listen to God. We walk and talk with him daily because God has assigned us for the different tasks that are in our lives. A lot of us have callings over our lives. A lot of us are chosen. And we have to really be mindful of how we present ourselves before the people of this world. Because many people have came and asked me questions and start questioning, trying to pick my brain. I come to tell you this, check it in the word of God. What has God said to you? If you have heard it numerous of times, it's going to be what God wants it to be. Not man. Hebrews 5 and 14 says, But solid food is from the mature for those who have their power of discernment, trained by the consistent practice to distinguish good from evil. So Hebrews 5 and 14 is using an illustration of solid food. Solid food means spiritual solid food, not the physical part of it. And the spiritual solid food is something that's nourishing and repentant because you have the power to discern those things. For example, they have got some very good strong substance that you really, really enjoy. And it's so soothing and it's so nurturing to your soul that you continue to nibble on it because it's growing you. Then you may have got a, a different type of substance that's liquidy and very disgusting. And you're eating on it and it's not bringing any discernment because it's bringing a lot of confliction and a lot of confusion. And that confliction and confusion really start to make you question that you really are hearing from God or you're hearing from a foreign force, which is the enemy and his wicked forces. See, so many people are stuck and conflicted by these things. By that being said, they start to wonder, is God speaking to them? And he is. He used different ways to show you this. Many of you have different gifts. And many of you have different talents. And many of you have different positions that God has assigned to you. And how is that so? Because you see things that are different than people that are around you. And you have a different viewpoint and a different way of seeing things than they would. And people will start coming against you and coming for you and saying all kinds of things that completely over the top. So when you begin to really start diving in and looking at what God is showing you about people, that's just know that's God's protecting you from those things that were about to harm you. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10 says, <clears throat> And it is my prayer that my love might bound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the days of Christ. That means confession and understanding and clarity. You grasp of these things as they are. And how is that so? Knowing that you're carrying God with you all the days of your life. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the division of souls and the spirit of joints and mirrors, and discerning the thoughts and intention of the hearts. Knowing the word of God for yourself. Learning how to balance those things out as they are at hand. Being very diligent and consistent of what is being spoken over you and over your life. Stop worrying about the man or the woman on the level. Stop focusing on God. And keep your head strong. Keep your mind firm. And be able to intensify your prayer life effectively. First Kings 3 and 9 says, Give your servant there for understanding minds to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil who is able to govern this, your great people. So 1 Kings 3 and 9 talks about giving your servant the understanding mind to govern. That means having an understanding 
of what that looks like encountering certain events that happens in your life. We're focusing on the spiritual aspect of it, everyone. And the spiritual aspect is letting us know. Be aware, be attentive, be alert, be faithful, be true, be of God. Amen. James 1 and 5 says, If any of you like wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without a reapproach and it be given and will be given him. Wisdom is so important. Confidence is so important. Knowing God's word is so important. Staying in God's word in his face is so critical at this time. What the scripture talks about is understanding and clarity and confirmation. Taking a different approach to help you navigate this thing called life can be very challenging and difficult. But once you know the difference between right and wrong, everything will be just fine. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present a phantom before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy with only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion, power both now and forever. If there's anybody today that wants to dedicate and rededicate their life, it's prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I confess in my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Come into my life, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For everyone's soul that is saved today, there is a celebration for those who have dedicated and rededicated their life to God. Let's give God a hand clap today as we conclude our series of discernment. All right, congregation. Thank you all for tuning in to today's message, everyone. I pray you all have a fantastic and a blessed week, everyone. I will see you back here on Tuesday for our BHT, which is Black Hood Traumatization webinar. And then on the following on next Sunday, our uh, presentation of Breast Cancer Awareness webinar at 1 p.m. next Sunday, everyone. I pray blessings over your life. The series that we're doing for our children's ministry, we're still talking about faith. Now, all the way to the month of April of next year, everyone. So make sure you tune in with that series, everyone. I pray blessings over your life. I pray God that keeps you and guards you. Continue to pray for the families that were affected by Hurricane Milton and Hella and all the different storms that has happened this year alone. Pray for those who are affected by the tornadoes. Be a blessing to them. Donate to the organizations out there. And anything that you have, the important parts of prayer is so, so, so critical in the times that we're living and pray for those who are sick and sheltered or who have lost loved ones or going through an element in their body. If you need prayer, you can inbox me directly about what you need prayer about. Thank you, Spirit. So moving forward, this is kind of just dropped in my spirit just now. On Time Ministry will open up a prayer line starting next year where you can call the prayer line and ask for prayer. This is something that is very critical in the times that we are living in. And this is be very, very important key point moving forward in OTM. So starting next year, we'll have a prayer line so people can call in and ask for prayer from that particular number. I will have that number and information for each and every last one of you at the end of the year. So that way, you can do that if you need prayer sooner. You can inbox me or email me at ontimeministry2021 at gmail.com, everyone. But we will have a prayer line for Orange Time Ministry to dial in to have prayer being demonstrated. The prayer line, I'll get more details moving forward of how that will be organized for people to reach that number. I pray blessings over your life. I pray God keep you and guide you in every step of the way. Again, I'll see you all Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. for the Black Witch Organization Week 3. Be blessed, be empowered, and live there. Take care, guys.